Hey you guys, what is going on? We have new engine code jet tags available right now. The link is in the description. driving an Evo 8. It's gonna be a great time. I have not driven an Evo actually since we were down in California uh, and I drove that insane 650 wheel horsepower Evo. Um, Evos always tend to scare the shit out of me. I don't know what, what it is about them and even more so than Skylines to be completely honest unless we're talking about a Skyline with like 700 plus but Evos have this thing where it's like they're not front wheel drive so they don't have the torque steer that a lot of front wheel drive, big power front wheel drive cars have, but they've got this like, you've got to hold on to the steering wheel kind of thing about them that makes them incredibly exciting. Um, and a lot of the times, honestly, more exciting than an equivalently powered STI. But let me tell you something, Evo 8s and Evo 9s are the best looking Evos, uh, and from what I've seen, the, the best platforms out of the entire Evo lineup to actually build big power. We're talking 400 plus wheel horsepower. So let's go for a drive and uh, we'll see what it's all about. actually a 2.3 liter stroker um, it does not have uh, it's not two liters anymore so obviously that helps a little bit with torque right um, and then you stick a like this car has 60 millimeter turbo roughly 31 pounds of boost uh, for high boost with e85 which now is becoming a little bit more readily available here in the lower mainland vancouver uh, allegedly i'm not going to say exactly where we are um, <laughs> but it's becoming a little bit more readily available. And especially with Evos and these four cylinder cars, the 85 is, yes, it can be kind of a pain in the ass, but it's kind of a necessity if you wanna run safe boost, like high boost and high power out of a four cylinder engine like an Evo. This is kind of one of the points that I wanted to make with this video is you can actually drive like a high horsepower Evo pretty much year round if you've got proper, if you got the proper setup, proper tires. Um, Jesus Christ. <laughs> See, that's what I mean right there. There's definitely torque steer, but the steering in Evos is so precise and like so manageable, and it's fairly light too, that it doesn't, it doesn't like stress you out when there's torque steer. You feel it, but it doesn't like literally pull your hands out of position too much, right? when you're really hammering on it, but. Okay, yeah. Ooh, that feels good. That feels good. Always surprising, uh, especially to people who, who have been brought up on V8 cars um, and muscle cars and stuff like that. They hear about four cylinders with 500 horsepower and they think, wow, it must be incredibly just laggy and depressing to drive, you know, between two and 3,000 RPM. And that can be the case, especially with, like I was saying, improperly tuned vehicles. With a properly tuned four cylinder, like a 4G or an STI engine, 
you've got plenty of torque. You've got plenty of torque. And the thing is, most inline fours of this caliber from Japan rev way higher than a lot of V8s, like LS V8s, Fox bodies, you know, stuff like that. So you have a, you have the same RPM band to play with. It's just you got to stay up in the RPM bands. And some people are like, oh, you got to, you have to rev it out. But it's like, no, you get to rev it out, right? You get to actually enjoy the screaming power, right? Honestly, you guys, this was kind of the end of the era for the iconic Japanese cars that are all about the drive. And I'm talking no real driver assist, no driver aids, right? I don't believe this car even has cruise control. And that's that's kind of why a lot of the cars, JDM imports and stuff, have become so popular and are now rising in value, especially the Evo 8s and Evo 9s, is because like, yes, it's a four-door sedan, but at the heart of it, it is a it is a rally car, right? It's, it's about input, it's about feeling the road, feeling the surface you're on, uh, and trying to put the power down as best as possible, which is one of the things that Evos are the best at, is putting power down to the road, right? Whether it be drag racing, road racing, whatever. Yeah, all right, big cracks, probably shoots flames. I'm gonna guess it does shoot flames, especially when you're like, you know, two-step drag strip kind of stuff. God damn. No, this is not a paint job. I actually thought this was a paint job when I first saw the car. Um, it is, in fact, a wrap. Surprising, yes, but striking nonetheless. I mean, this is... Whenever I see an Evo, I cannot help but think of the Fast and the Furious. I know that's, that's so cliche to say, <laughs> but a lot of the cars from that movie are just so brightly colored, so whenever I see a car that's like... Even if it's not overdone like this car, it's very tastefully modified, especially from the exterior but it's got that striking color, so you definitely notice it coming down the road. Best thing about this, well, not the best thing about this car, but one of the things about this car is like, it's a sleeper, but it's not a sleeper at all. And I'll tell you why. It's a sleeper to everyone that's not into cars. I mean, the color, no, but Everything else about this car is just like, it's a four-door sedan to any normal person with a big wing on it, right? Um, but like in comparison, a brand new Type R looks just as insane as this car. Um, but you know, Evos to, the, to a, an untrained eye, it's just a four-door sedan, but any real car enthusiast will definitely take note of this car. Very easy to drive this car though. All the inputs are great. The clutch is extremely daily drivable extremely daily drivable and in fact evos do have like i was mentioning very very light steering but very direct steering right so there's not a lot of input there's not a lot of effort um and then you actually get into the shifting of the car and everything and it's nicely weighted it's got a good good throw it's not too short but all the inputs in evos are honestly very fantastic i know when we were comparing the uh, STI and the Evo we filmed in California. And I pretty much said, I mean, I would probably take that particular STI over the Evo because it was a little bit more of like a sensory overload, I feel like, right? And the sounds and everything like that. But overall, overall, I'm gonna, I'm, I gotta say, I'm a bigger fan of Evos than I am STIs. Um, but this was basically one of the last Japanese cars of this caliber with no driver assist that was like, you know, left-hand drive, but. <laughs> that will, that will never get old. That will never get old. So this is running E85 at the moment. Um, Again, tuned at Evolution Auto. Uh, a lot of the work was done over there as well. 4,000 RPM. Not a whole lot of weight in between shifts. Wow. But yeah, it, it throws you back in your seat. It really does. 
always impressed too with the amount of boost these cars can run. I, I honestly don't know how, don't know how they do it. It makes my MR2 just seem super weak. You know, like if you push, boost cut on my MR2 is like 17 PSI. And if you push them much above 20, the engine is literally going to blow up. So it's pretty impressive to see a, uh, an Evo like this running 31 PSI, which is pretty conservative for a big power uh, Evo build. But that's why, it's another reason why you have E85. think it's gonna be all light and like dainty and stuff no absolutely not this is like closer to shifting a Dodge Viper than it is I don't know a Civic or something like that or even a Mustang for that matter like a stock Mustang very robust the clutch weight kind of matches the shifter weight and then the steering is honestly it's a little bit light for my liking but you know what makes up for it the, the, the direct nature of it it's so incredibly direct which makes turn in, the confidence of your turn in, incredibly high. Transmission is out of an Evo 6. Uh, basically, waiting to see how much power it can actually handle um, until something goes wrong. But again, these cars are very robust from the factory, and that cannot be said about a lot of cars um, that are not paired very well for the transmission. So that is why, honestly, one of the reasons why Evos make such good platforms to start from. Yeah, honestly, as far as tuning goes, I've driven a lot more SDIs and Evos that have like what we're doing right now, partial throttle, kind of city driving, that are way worse. Like this is, if I if I had to guess, and I didn't, nobody told me this had a lot of power, didn't have the gauges or anything, and I was driving around like this, stock. I would be like, okay, this car is completely stock. That's a testament to the tuner. It's parts and the tuner, mainly the tuning, right? And sure, you can do wide open throttle pulls on a dyno all day long and get that peak power number, but the car's useless if you don't have partial throttle daily driving capabilities. And there are not a lot of cars that can actually successfully pull that off. This is definitely one of them. All right, second gear. You're shifting very fast. The ratios are incredibly close. So like, Sure, it's a 60 millimeter turbo, but you're constantly in power. Constantly in power. And that's why these cars are so involved. It's like, you almost get to work out while driving them because you're constantly shifting gears when you're in and out of boost. And then you get rewarded with the pops and the flames from the exhaust and like the turbo spool. It's a lot of fun, let me tell you. It's a lot, it's a lot of fun. to boost. I love NA cars in the right set and setting. But overall, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I, I prefer turbocharged cars. And I'm not talking modern turbocharged cars that are turbocharged for the reason of being, or for the sake of being efficient. Japanese cars from the 90s and early 2000s like this were turbocharged to make big power and to make more power. And efficiency was just a side effect of that, which is something I absolutely love. So every time I get out of an Evo 8 or Evo 9 
with a big single turbo and this amount of power, I, I cannot help but think to myself, these are some of the most insane four-door sedans with a manual transmission that money can buy. And this build is absolutely no exception. That raspberry blue wrap has been done by Diamond Auto Glass in Richmond. As far as the engine work, that was done by the guys over at Evolution Auto in Burnaby. The car was built and tuned by Siraj and Alan over there, and they put a lot of work into making this build where it is today. Not a lot of Evos can stand the test of time uh, with this amount of power to the wheels, but this is one of those outliers, and it really was a pleasure to drive, so thank you guys. And before I forget, we have new engine code jet tags available right now at our store over at roadsuntravel.com slash shop. The link is in the description, specifically the 4G63 engine code jet tags. And only for you guys watching this video, you guys can have 25% off uh, on all engine code jet tag orders. Again, the link is in the description and the code will be there as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Follow us on Instagram at Roads Untraveled. We'll see you guys very soon with some epic content we filmed down in Atlanta, Georgia. See you guys then.